You said something that mystifies me. And I need everyone to think about this and explain it to me. You heard a mistake and it doesn't bother you there, right? In that recording. Um, I uh, was uh, tortured last night at the Bradley Center um, by a sound system that really was basically, I think you should have easily installed it in the state of Texas and everyone would have heard it. Bruce Springsteen was playing a song and actually picked up the wrong harmonica. Whether it was a mistake, I don't know. But uh, it was the wrong key. The tonic was completely incorrect, totally wrong, and no, everyone loved it. No one noticed, no one said a word. People were just going, Bruce, or whatever one does. And there were, I, don't wanna, I really don't want to explain this. There were, there were orgasmic things going on around me. I don't know. Uh, the whole notion of uh, this event last night uh, uh, as uh, bypassing the mistake had all to do with such extreme simulation and such extreme movement to another level that it's, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter that it was the worst harmonica I think I've ever heard in my entire life. I don't think I've ever heard anyone play as badly. And then they, they, let me continue, and then you need to explain to me why there was not an unsold seat in the Bradley Center. Um, they did close-ups of the guitar players. Uh, am I pronouncing the name correctly? Nils Lofgren, is that how one pronounces it? Thank you. I think he's one of the best guitar players, period. And um, you know they were doing close-up of his hands as he was going. I think I talked to you about this earlier. Just, you know, I, I don't know, we're, we're dealing with no playing, and um, it didn't matter. It made no difference. Nothing mattered. It wasn't about the music at all. It had nothing to do with the music. It had nothing to do with the music. I want to ask you for an explanation of it. Before you explain it to me, let me explain it to you. Um, it never did. I'm not sure that it ever did, and I think that we bring forward from sound recordings, expectations that are going to be automat. If certain things happen, like mediation and simulation, but I think it's gotten to a particularly egregious point today where you need to explain to me how this could happen. Isn't this almost saying like the record labels are correct? Have been correct all along? <laughs> that all this, all this, you know, you know, ha having Lead Belly dress up in the convict uniform and um, Roy Rogers, who the hell knows what his original name was, but it sure wasn't Roy Rogers. Well, I, you know, I was going to bring it in, and I, <laughs> things this morning just got too busy for me, but Roy Rogers, he's got a great last name. And, and so, um, the, this idea of authenticity, it, it's, what it's really about is, is what something is culturally. You know, what, what we decide something is culturally. Bruce Springsteen is Bruce Springsteen. It doesn't have anything to do anymore with, you know, what, what, what the sound is or how that happens. He's, he's a cultural artifact. Blackface. So if you have, if you have a certain kind of music that moves into museum performance status, where are the archives that supply the museum? 